Hello, Tash. Hello. Hey, guess what? What? I'm still at Winton. Okay. <laughs> so, so we should, so, so we should probably say we're recording a couple of these at a time, right? Yeah. Releasing, 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 letting them spread out. So we, we have busy lives and, and we have to schedule ourselves. So we're still at, still at Winton and, 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 and it's still lovely, still windy. But the helicopter's gone. <laughs> it's gone away. And I guess the, the purpose of our chat is, is really to, to um, help people in meditation and, and to give them little snippets, little tools to, to practice. And so we want to spread it out week by week. Yeah. yeah. And give um, our listeners and viewers an opportunity to explore and try and experiment with what we've talked about and, and some of the um, tools and techniques that we've suggested. And, you know, yeah. these are all, all suggestions and, and ways from which you can uh, discover what works for you. And, and we've talked about a few um, techniques already and, and really wanted to um, offer a, a sutra today. So a sutra, what is a sutra? <laughs> well... A sutra is a little thread that's just a, a short verse, part of a whole weaving of, of, of life, I suppose. But the sutras that we're reading are out of the Radiant Sutras from the Vinyana Bhairava Tantra. We spoke about that before. Yeah. Uh, it's a text that, that was, I think, first written 800 years ago, but it's got a long oral history, a long oral tradition before that. So if we, if we go back into into India, Tibet, Nepal, the Himalayas, where the, the owners of the tradition, or the, 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 I'd say the holders of the tradition, not the owners of the tradition, because there's no real ownership to this, where the holders of the tradition would chant it in Sanskrit so that it could be remembered. Mm. And then it was passed on orally. Mm. So, so these sutras are, are very condensed little nuggets of information and 32 syllables long. Um, and when they're chanted, they might take about 15, 20 seconds to chant. But I, as I read it, it might take longer than that because my Sanskrit's not a chant. It's more embodying it than chanting it. And then Lauren Roche, who is Dr. Lauren Roche, has, has transliterated them, not transcribed them, but transliterated them into poetical renditions mm -hmm. that is rich for our English ears. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I will put um, links to the Radiant Sutras and, and the work of Dr. Lauren Roche in the um, description of the youtube video and we'll put it in the um, itunes podcast so you can find more information about this and and I, I would also like to say that the radiant sutras whilst there are links to kashmiri shavanism um these are really practices that are written for householders would have known of as householders and that yeah. and, and it's believed that the sutras themselves were were came uh, arose from a conversation between maybe a man and a woman it, it's not really um you know known um but we we could maybe make an assumption that it's a conversation between a man and a woman and, and really a conversation where they discuss uh, like experiences of life that we can yeah. all relate to and so the radiant sutras provides um 112 gateways to to meditation um, mm. and so this we have already discussed it in the past but this style of meditation of which i believe there are many different styles is um one that is really accessible for people like you and i you know we're, i I'm, I'm not a monk i'm not a nun i you know i, I have a family and a job and yep. um, I'm not in a position to be able to sit and chant and read from scriptures for 10 hours a day. I, I need to generate wealth and I live in the world, you know? And so um, this style of, of meditation is 
uh, really uh, well suited to, to people like you and me who are Absolutely. not we're walking the path of, of intimacy, being intimate with other people and, and ourselves. It's, it's about falling in love. Mm. Deeper yeah. and deeper in love with, with life, with your own life, mm. with your own inner nature. And through that, being able to live a rich life with the relationships you have with other people and the earth and everything. Mm. Um, and one of the ways that, that we do that is, is with the real attunement to our senses, which is, this is like our second part of the, of the senses and door to, door to, to perception. So let, let's, let's get into this sutra. It's sutra 50, the 73rd thread in this conversation. And I'll start. I'll read it in the Sanskrit first, and then and then in the English. So, what I like to think of is if if you if you're listening to the sutras, is just let the words. There, there, there they are. Just let the words. Fl sort of float over you, wash over you. Not necessarily focus on it, but just let the words come in, and play their own way with you. Mm. And so you, you, you've kind of touched on there the skill of effortlessness. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Effort. It is a skill. Effortlessness is a real skill. Um, we, we don't want to focus. No. That, it takes, takes work. It, it, it's hard work. And meditation shouldn't be hard work. Yeah. I, mean, I think, you know, we do enough focusing and concentrating in our everyday life and, and that there might be um, good cause to, to let that be a part of your meditation at, at certain times. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the vast majority, majority of us could really employ a little bit more of effortlessness in our life. And, and as we've alluded to in, in this style, it, it's one of the many skills that we develop. And, and for some people, it comes more naturally than others. That's um, right. So we, we suggest as you listen to the sutra that Michael's about to read out that you, yeah, you don't need to hone in and, and, and sort of hone in on your powers of focus and concentration, uh, but rather just allow your attention and, and your body and, and even the sort of quality of your awareness, allow that to be effortless. In fact, we, we kind of challenge you. <laughs> How effortless can you be? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, okay, I have a confession to make. <laughs> I'm lazy <laughs> in my meditation. When I when I when I say I'm going to meditate, I go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Michael has his eyes closed and he looks like he's just kind of slumping on the couch and falling asleep for those of you who are listening. <laughs> it's just, it's just how lazy can we be? Mm. How, how much can I just give in to what I'm experiencing now? Mm. And like my best meditation is the do nothing meditation, right? It's just, I'm going to just sit here and do nothing. It's just like, Oh. The two and, nothing meditation. Yeah, it's awesome. But this is this is this is this is Sutra Fifty. So let let's do nothing with this. Just okay. let it wash over. Just let it wash over you, and see what it see what it, see what the experience is. Okay. So you can have your eyes open or closed. You can take whatever, whatever comfortable position you like for you. That might be sitting, it might be lying, it might be laying back. Start with a breath. Take a big inhalation, then just let it fall out. Guitar Adi. Visha Yash Vada Sama. 
Sakya ika tat mana. Yogi na tat mayat vena manas ruda tat atmata. All around you in every moment. The world is offering a feast for your senses. Songs are playing. Tasty food is on the table. Fragrances are in the air. Colors fill the eyes with light. You who are longing for union, attend to this banquet with loving attention. The outer and inner worlds open to each other. Oneness of vision, oneness of heart. Right here in the midst of it all, mount that elation, ascend with it. Become identical with the ecstatic essence embracing both worlds. Gitadi Vishaya Asvada Sama Sakya Ikatatmana Yogina Tat Mayatvina Manas Rude Tatat Mata The world is offering us feast for your senses. And so Lauren Roche, who transliterated that sutra, he suggests that this particular sutra is an invitation um, for us to attend to the Feast of the Senses in everyday life. Yeah. You know, everyday life, it might be folding the laundry, the smell of the laundry. The smell. Um, yeah, the smell of freshly ground coffee, whatever it is, whatever it is that, you know, ignites that feeling of being alive inside of you to, to, to use that as, as a doorway to access your meditative experience and um, to, to, to use this skill to um, feel that sense of being alive and, and maybe bursting with, with joy or, or maybe softening with, um, this feeling of um, contentment, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but it's an invitation to enjoy the feast for the senses in everyday life. Everyday life. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, we can walk outside and look and see a tree. Mm hmm. Or we can see the branches, the leaves, the movement of the leaves in the wind. We can see the different nuance of color in the leaves. We can see wow. the cloud floating behind the tree. A <laughs> sense of sight. It's amazing hmm. that that. that like the light that we're seeing by for a start it's come from the sun mm. you know and it's reflecting off everything around us and it's and it's telling us all about everything that, that's around us and it's telling us that everything about the tree the shape movement the 
different tones of color. And as with, as with, with the last experience with sound, that idea that, that these photons are touching our eyes and then we have these little sensors in our eyes that turn it, turn it to electrical impulses that put it in the back of our brain and our brain then starts to give it meaning and take, starts to make some sense. It, isn't it interesting that, that the same word, we have the sense of sight, but then in our brain, we make sense. Mm -hmm. We give it, we give meaning to mm -hmm. what this, what this, what these impulses are that are coming into our body. Yeah, we have this yes. external information. And when we talk about sunlight, these little packets of, of energy, little packets of photons, they call it. And, and as you yeah. say, it comes into our, visual feel it's perceived we take it in and then as you said it's it's um that we need to make sense of it that our our minds needs to process that that data and then make meaning of it um so we we're that we're constantly just by seeing hearing speaking breathing we're constantly in communication and, and interdependence and, and relationship with the outer world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and it, lead, it, it leads on to this thought of okay we have this brain that's capable of doing all of this stuff like our, our sensory input if we were to talk about it is like gigabytes of data every second right yeah. There's so much stuff coming in, but this brain that we have is the ability to filter what's important to me right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's exquisite in its ability to say that's important. That's not, I need to see that red light. I don't I, hang on. Someone's just driven past me. Do I need to, is there a problem there? We can We all these senses are coming in a feast, the world's offering a feast for our senses. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, our brain's got the capacity to say what's important. Mm -hmm. That's important to me. That that's not important to me. I don't need to notice that right now. Yeah. That, same, that same brain when we go into meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's this cognition. Yeah. People say, stop the thoughts. Stop <laughs> that brain that is capable of having trillions of trillions of interactions a second mm, mm. turn it off mm. yeah stop it down well let's not try to do that yeah yeah let's again just be reminded that you know there is a a, a common narrative in the the language instruction of meditation that leads the practitioner to believe that they are wrong <laughs> for having a brain that works. That's experiencing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. say, why not celebrate the, the way that the life force is expressing itself through you in the form of yeah. thoughts, in the form of processing this data and organizing it and, and filing it, and sorting it and making sense of it. Celebrate the mind wandering cherish and, and welcome the movement of thoughts mm -hmm. um, and it, this is a really key um, skill and attitude and quality and and distinction i would say from the path of intimacy to the path of detachment yep. and and so I, i'm really hoping that the listeners can um, detect when they maybe start to bully themselves or shame themselves for having a mind that works. We, we, we invite you to do the opposite, to cherish and love and embrace and be really um, compassionately accepting of all of who you are, including your thoughts. <laughs> uh, uh, allow yourself to be carried away, right? Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to go on the journey that your sub conscious brings up for you when you think about just looking at the sky 
it might it may be as simple as the face sphere sensors might be opening up and watching clouds float across the sky yeah and and out of that oh my god i forgot <laughs> to get the washing off the line last night and it's wet yeah okay well i'll do that later <laughs> i'm gonna have this five minutes for me now and then oh i better get the washing off the line and throw it in the dryer because i need them i need those clothes dry this afternoon mm -hmm. this is what having a life is about yeah in your meditation what comes up is actually what you need to know. It's not what you need to don't know. It's not that I need to shut that down. Mm -hmm. it's, it's as I'm letting them, as I'm letting the photons that come from the sun bounce off, be filtered through the, the ozone that makes our sky blue and bounce off the clouds that, and shows me white as they're floating across the sky and I remember Oh my God, the washing's on the line. <laughs> like that is, that's actually pure brilliance. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday I had a conversation with someone who is wanting me to deliver a, a seminar or meditation and, and, and he's recognizing that uh, in our community there, there is um, a growing amount of mental health issues, depression mm -hmm. and, anxiety and he thought well i want to you know support the people of my community and help them with managing their stress and i, I want to you know expose them to to meditation great and he kept saying you know they just need something to separate themselves from life just he said separate and get away escape he said he, they need an escape he kept saying that i had a telephone conversation and i didn't mm -hmm. want to be like a crazy woman and launch into um you know addressing that word and, and that languaging that he's using but again this is the common i believe the common perception that that meditation is distancing yourself from life and removing yeah, yeah. yourself from it and and that might be a useful tool in, in certain moments of your life um, it might sometimes be necessary, you know, you've got to go into a meeting, you've got to separate yourself from whatever's going on at home or whatever, that there might be a time and a place for that. But <laughs> um, this approach is really helping us to engage with life. Exactly. To, to be intimate with all aspects of being human and being intimate on the path of yeah, being yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I'll, I'll follow up with that. Um, one of our colleagues in our, in our teacher training, in our teaching um, community, posted yesterday um, on, our, on our page um, that some, a, a, a link to a, an article in Psychology Today, on the Psychology Today website, where an author had written for people who hate themselves meditation is a bad thing mm. right because and there were there were a list of all of the reasons why meditation is no good for people who hate themselves and have difficulty mm. with themselves mm. and all of those reasons mm. were things like you were talking about there mm -hmm. detaching themselves from getting away from and i found myself contacting this author and saying yeah you haven't yet investigated the path of intimacy where we treat ourselves tenderly where we look to look to be tender with ourselves and there's you know there's so many ways that people are already escaping through the form of excessive drinking or shopping or sport or whatever it is there's yeah, so yeah. many ways that people are already escaping 
the reality of life. And I don't know what you think, but I don't think it's working out for a lot of people <laughs> that that approach. I think I think you're right. I think you're right. I think I think you know, all these like, gambling, need- online shopping, you know, all these things are escaping any big feelings. Yeah. I'll eat another piece of cake. I'll just buy another pair of shoes. I'll yeah. just buy another shot of Botox and everything, <laughs> you know, really. Um, everything will be okay. Yeah. Whatever it takes to avoid being intimate with myself because I don't have the skills to handle it. I think this is, and we go back to last two sessions ago where we talked about the skills we build along the way. And one of those primary skills is, is what we've defined in our rules is being tender, deeply tender with yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and learning, learning that. So this, 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 this author said, she's going to go on, research lauren roach yay um, well done michael she's, she's gonna go and you know because like psychology today a lot of people are going to be reading that website right yeah. Yeah. And, the, and 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 a lot of people are going to be swayed by the the this 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 person's opinion that meditation for this group of people is not for you because you're only gonna beat yourself up more yeah because you're not going to be able to follow the rules that says stop the thoughts, calm your mind, get out of your own head. Yeah. And we know that that is not how life works. Yeah. And, and again, just to come back to, you know, your and my intention of really, you know, having these conversations and releasing them out to the public, it's just to remind everyone that, there is another way, you know, there, there is, you know, the style of, of calming your mind and stopping the thoughts that, that exists. And it could be very effective for certain people at certain times. Um, but yeah. we, we would like for you to consider that, you know, to put everything aside that you may already have studied or read or, or even thought about meditation and to consider that there's another way. And we, we invite you to yeah. explore the path of intimacy um, maybe look into Lauren Roche's work on the Radiant Sutures. And, and again, I'll put that link in the, in the show notes and, um, yeah, and yeah. the YouTube description. Um, and hopefully we can expose more people to this style. Um, yeah. But it's really yeah. respectful of individual differences. Um, gives you a lot of freedom to explore tools and techniques that are uniquely um, suited to you and your life and, and your inner ecosystem. Yeah. Um, should we finish? Should we finish with the words of the sutra just floating? Yes. I think that would be a great way to wrap it up. Washing over us again. Washing over effortlessly. Effortlessly. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do that. And then we'll just let them, it's just like, let them ring, let them sing into yourselves. Yeah. And we'll, and, and we'll stop the recording. Yeah. As you just drift away. And if anything that we say in conversation, you know, brings about questions, Michael and I really welcome you to get in touch with us. And um, again, our, our contact details will be, be listed in the description. Um, please don't, don't hesitate to ask us a, a question if it has arisen. Let's, let's, let's be infused with the words of um, Sutra 50. Thanks, Michael. Gitaadi. Vishaya Asvada Samasakya Ikatat Mana Yogina Tat Mayat Vena Manasrude Tat Asmata All around you in every moment. The world is offering a feast for your senses. Songs are playing. Tasty food is on the table. 
fragrances that are in the air. Colors fill the eyes with light. You who long for union, attend this banquet with loving attention. The outer and inner worlds are open to each other. Oneness of vision, oneness of heart. Right here in the midst of it all, mount that elation, ascend with it. Become identical with the ecstatic essence, embracing both worlds. The world is offering a feast for your senses. Attend this banquet with loving attention. <laughs> 